Hello everyone, welcome back to the co-op series. So now let's update our character's movement, kind of smooth out the animations, because right now when she runs around, my engine crashes. Let's try that again. Right now when she runs around, it kind of kind of jerks into the movement transition. So let's open up our player blueprint. And under the character movement, we need to adjust some of her general settings. So the max acceleration, this is how fast she'll go from zero to full throttle. So 1500 is a bit quick. I'm going to set this to 768. It's just a number I've picked at random because I seem to operate under power of two. I don't know why, or whatever that is, that, that computer numbers. It works for me, but you can play around, find what you like. And then the braking deceleration so that she doesn't just immediately stop. I'm going to set that also 768. So now when I come out here, a little bit smoother build up to her full speed. And then she slows down to a stop. So now let's work on getting this multiplayer. So the first thing I want to do in order to do that is add a variable inside the player base called player index and this is vital for everything we're going to do later on because each player will have its own index we need to be able to reflect that in the player blueprint so now what we can do is actually create a child blueprint class of this called player1 underscore bp create one more child class called player2 underscore bp so this is going to be where the meat of our logic is done, and then these are just going to be controllable children of it that will each have their own. You can adjust the stats of one of them, or they'll each have their own inventory, etc. But we can establish everything here and then let each one be a variation of it. So I'm going to open both of these up real quick. And see now, up here we have our player index. I'm going to leave this one at zero because this is player one. And then player two, I am going to set to one. So we need to go into our third person game mode right now and change our default pawn class from player base to player one. We'll compile and save real quick and then jump out and you can't really tell the difference but this is actually the player one blueprint if I jump out and then come over here should be able to find it somewhere player one blueprint so in order to get us to actually spawn in the second player let's go into the game mode open the full blueprint and we are going to create a custom event in here called spawn player 2. What we want to do is first we are going to set default pawn class to player 2. And then we are going to spawn, actually no we're not going to spawn, we are going to create local player. Just like that, it'll spawn a player controller for us and it'll automatically be this one. Now in order to show you that it is that one, I'm actually going to change this mesh real quick. You don't have to do this part, but I'm gonna. So over here. Yeah. Alright, now we need an actual way to call that. I'm just going to do this in the level blueprint for now. We'll set up a... a tower thing or whatever you would call it thing to interact with later on that'll be a summoning portal type thing but I'm going to open the level blueprint right now right click in the graph type in one and get a keyboard event it's not going to be on the one but it's just easier to get to this way I'm actually going to set this up on the P key so on key press we want to cast to third person game mode we will get game mode for the object and then we can spawn player 2 right there so I'll compile that real quick yeah okay so when we jump out here so yeah so he's just a posing right now it's because 
because uh, I just changed him. If I change player two back to the other mesh and then set the player animation blueprint back, then we got two of this character, huzzah. We'll change player two's model later on, but for right now, for testing purposes, this will get us going. So I'm going to go into my project settings real quick because I want to update, I don't like a, a horizontal split, I like a vertical split, personally. Well, I don't, but the missus does and she got me used to it. But what we can do is if you like a, the split, you can go into the project settings, type in multi, it'll bring up your local multiplayer options. You can, if you're doing a Diablo style game, you can disable this and then everything's on one screen. Whoa. So you can have your top-down view where the screen is shared, or that's the wrong button, or you can go into here, you can adjust this to vertical, and then it does get very far away, but we will uh, update this pretty simply soon. We'll just uh, adjust the camera position based on how many players there are. But for right now, that's getting us going. One thing we will need to do in order to test this, we need to select this skip assigning gamepad to player one. This will make it to where the second player controller automatically gets a gamepad that you plug in. So unless you have two gamepads, uh, I only have one that I can use. So I'm going to be selecting that. That way the first person, first player gets the keyboard, and then player two gets, whoa, way too close. <laughs> gets the gamepad. I don't I don't actually have my gamepad right now. Where is it at? Well let's set up the camera adjustment real quick. So inside the player base blueprint we will create a custom event called update cams for co op. Basically what we need to do is move the camera just a little bit closer and change the perspective so that it's not quite so far away. So if the camera, before we do that, we should probably set our camera where we're going to want it. So I don't like this camera position. I'm going to change it to, I'm going to move my camera boom up a little bit and then shorten it just a smidgen. Too high. You can position it where you like. This looks probably. This will be fine. We'll fix that too. <laughs> so now it's not quite as bad, but still we'll want it to shift a little bit. So now that we got our camera positioned inside the update cams for co op, let's grab our camera boom and set target arm length. Right now it's at. 325 um, let's go for 250 and see how that looks now in order to do that inside our third person game mode after we create the local player we will get actors of class class being the player base and then uh, for each loop which will run through all instances of those that array and we can call that update cams function can you shut the door it's creating a weird thank you so let's call that update cams for co-op right there and Got it a little bit closer. That looks pretty good actually. So this will work. But what you'll notice is if you push the P key again, we got a third person. We only want to do two players, so let's go into our uh, third person map blueprint. Please go get Lila. Okay, I'll take her out in just a second. I'm almost done. So on pressed first we want to see how many local players there are are so let's get local player get number local player controllers 
and if it's greater than one, then we actually want to destroy one, and if it's not, then we will create one. So in order to destroy, we'll also go into our third person game mode, create a custom event called destroy player two. And we will destroy, not destroy, what is it? Remove player, remove local player, there it is. Now right here we can drag off and get player controller and the player controller index is one. So this is why we need to set up the player index in our blueprint is because other right here we can hard code it in but when we get to interacting with things to where it won't be able to tell uh, where we can't just hard code a number uh, we'll be able to feed in that player index and then we'll know which which player is interacting with it which inventory to fill who's opening a shop etc. We also want to click this destroy pawn. That way it destroys the pawn class that we spawn. So back over in, I think it's this, yeah. Let's copy that game mode and cast. Paste it up here. Actually I can get rid of this game mode and just plug this one in. And then from here we will destroy player two. So now we can, yeah. Oh, but that does mess our camera up. So we can inside our update cams, let's add a branch and we will get num local player controllers again and see if it is greater than one and if it is then we set it to this target arm length and if it's not then we will set it back to our original target arm length so that is 325 so still close let's see so in here we're creating it and then it's calling it get number local player controllers this will be zero on dedicated servers maybe it needs to be greater than zero Okay. Well, let's find out. So a quick way to test this would be to add a print string on the true. I'm going to say more than one. Copy and paste it. That's not what I wanted to copy and paste. Copy and paste you right here. And I'm going to say only one. So I'm going to set this back to the way it was. So more than one, more than one. So it's only printing one time. Ah, okay. That's because I'm dumb. <laughs> so let's copy this, and paste it down here, and then do <laughs> call the actual update cams again. That's my bad probably helps to actually recall that so there it's doing that only one more than one only one all right so let's delete those print strings real quick because that was working all along after all so you may have noticed that when the players get too close to each other that the cameras kind of uh, get way too close <laughs> so what we can do is actually go to our camera boom and our follow camera 
is it the follow camera or the camera boom? Let's check the camera boom and then check its collision settings. No, 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 no. It's the mesh. So go to your mesh and we can go down to its collision settings. We'll set it to custom and then we'll set it to ignore the camera right here. And we'll do the same thing for the capsule component. So collision presets, custom, ignore the camera. Yeah, so that way you don't mess with each other when you're running around because that would get old pretty quick. All right, so now we got our local multiplayer system started. So one more thing we'll do for this video if it's not going on too long. 15 minutes, we got time. So let's go into our player animation blueprint. Ooh, okay, it froze. let's just save real quick. So save everything <laughs> just to make sure it doesn't crash on me again. And then go to our event graph and we will copy and paste the cast to this then one. Drag it down. From here we will get is falling. Clean it up a little bit and then prom right click, promote that to a variable called jump. Might as well jump. So now in the base state we can back this one up a little bit and we want to do a blend poses by bool. We're gonna get this fall loop and bring it to the top because our jump boolean will be the active value. And if it's true, we want to play this animation. If it's false, we play this one. So now we can jump. I don't have my other controller right now, or uh, I'd show you it <laughs> running around, but that will do it for this one. And in the next one, we'll start working on some of the functionality for our players. So I will see y'all then. Bye.